In the previous videos, we already talked about the timer, what it is used for, the timer's advantages, and described the programming process. In this video, we are going to take a closer look at the timer. We will unbox it, connect it to the programmer, connect the programmer to the smartphone or tablet and do the initial configuration and testing. Also, we will cover some troubleshooting tips. You can find links to other videos in the description of this video. If you already received your timer then you can follow along with us. We are going to use one of the commonly used functions to demonstrate the timer's programming process. Once you master programming, changing the function and the related parameters should be pretty simple. First of all, let's see what is in the box. Here is the 5 amp timer. 10 amp timer. And the programmer. The programmer is sold separately and is required to program the timer. The programmer is used to select the timer's function and change the timing and other parameters. It is also used to load new and updated functions. We are going to program the timer on the bench. What I mean by that is we are going to connect the timer directly to the programmer. The timer will not be connected to any loads. The internal LED will indicate active output. The timer will receive power directly from the programmer. This creates a self-contained programming environment where the timer is only connected to the programmer. We can program and test the timer before it will be incorporated into the final circuit. There are situations where the timer is already integrated into the circuit and in that case, we would use in-circuit programming. But let's start with a simple example. To connect the timer to the programmer, we will use the three alligator clip wires supplied with the programmer. We will connect the ground, power, and data line between the timer and the programmer. Don't connect the USB cable to the programmer just yet and ensure the programmer's power switch is in the off position. Take the alligator clip wires and connect the timer to the programmer, connecting red to red, black to black, and white to white. Bend the wires slightly to make sure the alligator clips are not touching each other, or find another way to secure the wires, for example with an electrical or masking tape. Now we can power the programmer. Plug the micro USB cable into the programmer's socket, the other end of the USB cable can be plugged into a USB charger, computer, or USB power bank. This will supply the 5 volts to the programmer, and you should see the programmer's red LED light up. Now we can slide the programmer's power switch to the on position. This will supply power to the timer. The programmer's blue LED should light up if the programmer can successfully communicate with the timer. At this stage, we successfully connected the timer to the programmer. Now we need to connect the smartphone, tablet, or laptop to the programmer. The programmer acts as an interface between the timer and the phone. The programmer creates a local Wi-Fi network. Open the phone network configuration menu and scan for new networks. Once you find timers.shop network, try to connect to it. Some of the devices might take some time to connect, and you might see the message the internet is not accessible anymore. This is normal, the phone is now connected directly to the network created by the programmer, and the phone will not be able to connect to the internet while it is connected to the programmer. There is no special app required to control the timer. Just open a web browser and enter the following into the address bar. 192.168.4.1 and press the enter or go. Make sure you are still connected to the programmer's Wi-Fi network or the page will not come up. If everything worked as expected you should be able to see the main page with several options. Let's do the initial output toggle test to test the basic controls. Click the output on menu and you should see the timer's internal LED light up. Clicking on the output off should turn the LED off. Observe the internal LED to come on. The LED is connected directly to the output, and the brightness depends on the supplied voltage. Let's continue. We are going to set the timer to function 5. Function 5 will toggle the output on and off, and it is a good function to practice programming the timer. 
The timer holds one function at a time. All the available functions are loaded into the programmer's flash memory. We are going to select the function we want to load into the timer and let the programmer transfer it to the timer. Once transferred, the program will be permanently saved into the timer's memory until you decide to load a different function. Click on the Select Function menu and select Function 5 from the list and click Select. It will take about 30 seconds to upload the function program to the timer. Once this is done, go back to the main menu and click on the timer's configuration menu. We will now configure timer's on and off timing for our cycling function. Set the T1 time to 1 second and T2 to 2 seconds. Keep the trigger set to 0, which means no trigger, and click save. Wait until you see the message the configuration is successfully refreshed. Once the configuration is refreshed we are ready to test the function. Slide the programmer's switch to the off position, disconnect the white wire from the timer and move the switch back to the on position supplying power to the timer. If the white wire is left connected, the timer will go into programming mode and not execute the configured function. Now you should see the timer's LED cycling on and off. Let's now change the configuration and configure the trigger. The trigger wire can sense the applied voltage and start the function. We have another video covering the trigger functionality in detail, but for this exercise, we are going to set the trigger to 2. This configuration will start the function when the blue wire is momentarily connected to power. To change the configuration, slide the switch to turn the power off, reconnect the white wire, and resupply power. Go back to the menu, go into the timer's configuration, change the trigger to 2, and click Save. Once the configuration is refreshed, we can retest the timer. Turn the power off, disconnect the white wire, and resupply power. Hopefully, you got the programming steps now. The LED should not cycle, because this time we did configure the trigger. Carefully take the end of the blue wire and touch the red wire alligator clip. This will trigger the execution of the function and you should see the LED cycle. This is it. You can now try to select other functions and test them. Here are a couple of troubleshooting tips. If the programmer's blue LED does not light up, then the programmer cannot properly communicate with the timer. Check the connection and retry. If the programmer's web page does not load, verify the device is still connected to the programmer's Wi-Fi network. The web page displays the communication statuses as well as error messages. Keep an eye on them, they might help to troubleshoot the issues. For a more detailed dive into the timer's functions, trigger use, programming, and common application, please click on the links provided in the description of this video. Don't forget to subscribe and get notified of new videos and news. Thank you.